So in the last stream chat, we were working in our new Max compact machine over here, trying to uh, automate essentially a new tree farm, which is what we have here with our uh, phytogenic insulators uh, to make charcoal to send through and uh, eventually turn into hop graphite ingots. And uh, as of right now, we have 88,600 hop graphite ingots out of the 270,000 hop graphite ingots that we need if we're going to get all of the diamond nuggets required uh, to complete the diamond quest in the challenges. The other quest that we were looking at, of course, was the uh, the poop quest. And we are slowly but surely getting down on the poop as well. We're currently at 84,100. Our uh, pulped bio blend here is still being made. We are still getting wheat slowly but surely from uh, this other phytogenic insulator. And that is still being turned uh, into that bio blend and then being used to make more poop for us. And so um, really for now, I think this setup can kind of just be left as it is. And eventually it will get us um, everything that we're after in terms of hot graphite ingots and in terms of, um, of poop. The other, there were a few other, the, I guess the only other quest then really that we have to do once we've completed these two quests is the force more quad smingot quest. Now, uh, this quest is made with two more small double smingots with milk chocolate and marshmallow, which is made with two small smingots with milk chocolate and marshmallow. Uh, these are made with two graham crackers with milk chocolate and marshmallow. The graham crackers are just flour, which is just wheat. So hopefully as soon as we have the poop, we can maybe re- use the flour that, or the, the wheat that we're making right now to make flour and use that flour to make graham crackers. That seems easy enough. The milk chocolate also isn't too bad. It's made, it's, it's quite a process, but it's not terribly difficult to make. It's made from uh, molten milk chocolate, which is made in a salt mixer with molten dark chocolate and milk. Milk we can, of course, get from cows. Molten dark chocolate we make in a salt mixer again with molten unsweetened chocolate with molten sugar. Molten sugar, you guessed it, is made by melting sugar. The molten unsweetened chocolate is made by combining chocolate liqueur and cocoa butter in a salt mixer. The cocoa butter is made in a fluid extractor and you get it from ground cocoa nibs. We'll come back to those because the chocolate liqueur is also made with cocoa nibs in a melter. The cocoa nibs that you need both for the cocoa butter and for the chocolate liquor is made uh, from roasted cocoa beans, which are made from regular cocoa beans. So essentially, mostly just cocoa beans with some sugar. Again, not too difficult just a bunch of machines. The hard part for us is going to be the marshmallow because this is made in an ingot former with liquid marshmallow, which is made from molten sugar and hydrated gelatin. The hydrated gelatin is made with water and regular molten gelatin. And that regular molten gelatin is made from regular gelatin, which is made from either raw pork chops or raw fish. So we either have to farm fish or pork chops, but, and as luck would have it, uh, the easier of the two here, I think is the fish because there is an aquatic entangler from thermal expansion, which allows us to catch fish and other aquatic life. So I think, Chad, we're going to start by setting this up. It is going to take us a while to get enough gelatin, I think, to make the quad small smingot, the four small quad smingot. So we're going to set that up, let it do its thing, and then we're going to come back, I think, to trying to get more hop graphite ingots, or at least more diamond nuggets, potentially through uh, enchanting some diamond pickaxes with unbreaking and uh, throwing those into our diamond pickaxe clicking room. Let's see then about making this uh, aquatic entangler. It's a fairly easy recipe. A fishing rod, device frame, two iron bars, two iron gears, and one redstone servo. Most of that, um, I think we should have already. Uh, we don't have any string, but our system does know how to craft it. We're missing industrial hemp fiber. And uh, the reason that we're missing industrial hemp fiber is in the last stream, we took down this compact machine here, which was housing all of our garden cloches. And one of those garden cloches was making hemp fiber. And so for now, the cash holding hemp fiber is uh, is in here. I don't want hemp seeds. I want industrial hemp fiber. That's the one. And we'll go ahead and put an external storage on that just so we have it when we need it. And I think I might even put this in the tree farm room for now, just so it's a little out of the way. We could probably just like hide it down here like that. Obviously, in an, in an ideal world, we'd have uh, a garden cloche making hemp again, but I, I don't really think we're going to use more than 180,000 hemp throughout the remainder of the mod pack, but I do think that we could possibly set up more, uh, more garden cloches going forward. So we'll start with 64 there. Obviously, two is more than enough. And at that point, I think we have pretty much everything it takes to make the aquatic entangler. Nice. Now, if I'm not mistaken, the way this works is you place it over a body of water, and uh, it doesn't require any power but it will just passively generate fish. There are ways to make it faster, but I believe to start, we need to put it over at least a body of water that is five wide, five long, and two deep, I think. Now, you do get a bonus in terms of uh, the amount of fish you get if you put it over a larger body of water. And so I think what I might do here, chat, is uh, basically just fill 
the bottom of a 7x7 body uh, combat machine with water. We'll put it here for now, but probably end up moving it uh, fairly soon. So once we have a 7x7 room that is full of water, essentially, I think all we have to do is uh, basically place this guy in the middle, like so. And then I'm going to set my entry point, I think. I, I might put my entry point like here, because I think we are going to have cabling coming off the top of this uh, aquatic entangler. Uh, but I think this should work, chat. Now, um, it does say on the left here, it says, Captures assorted aquatic life. Use bait to boost production. Must be placed in a body of water. Oh, actually, it might be need to be uh, one block further down. I think it actually has to be here, like that. There we go. Now, I believe that we have, if I go to at thermal expansion, we have this stuff here. Aqua Chow, Rich Aqua Chow, and Fluxed Aqua Chow. It works kind of like the Phytogrow, Rich Phytogrow, and then Fluxed Phytogrow for the Phytogenic Insulator, but this time with the uh, Aquatic Entangler. And essentially, depending on which one of these you put in, you can multiply the amount of fish that you get out. And uh, it doesn't seem too difficult. So they're made with uh, sawdust, which we're making, bread, which we can make from our wheat, and then slime balls. Slime balls are made, obviously, from slime blocks for us. We could also make them with cheese curd, but that requires going to the moon, and we don't currently have that option available to us. But uh, slime blocks are made, of course, with uh, mushrooms and milk. And mushrooms we can duplicate with our uh, phytogenic insulator and uh, some flux phytogrow. So I'm I'm thinking, chat, that it might not be a terrible idea. And I do think this will eventually give us some uh, some fish, by the way. I think by default, the, uh, the, 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 the rate is like once every six minutes, it will give you a fish, which is obviously not a ton. But uh, if you add more chow to it you get more fish uh, and it, you might even get it more uh, regularly as well i'm not entirely sure on that one but uh let's see i think if we can't make this happen uh the next tier requires nether wart which is also not too bad and then the highest tier is just the uh the previous tier through an energetic infuser with the uh, 8000 redstone flux none of which looks too bad uh, you'll see these particle effects here i don't know if you can quite see those on uh on the video but there are particle effects showing that this is uh, indeed working underwater there but uh, if we head back the uh, hardest part about getting the aqua chow is going to be getting slime. And I really don't think that's going to be too difficult. If we get some auto clickers, we should be able to uh, automate the milking of the cows that we currently have over in here. I believe all we have to do, and it could be a little tricky given how compact these cows are, although I think in general we do want them to be as compact as possible. I think really we want the cows preferably in like one block space. I can, in fact, I can pick these guys up, right? Yeah, okay. So I'm going to move them out for a second. We'll put them back in when we uh, have the clicker down. And uh, essentially, all I'm going to do is grab one of these. I'm going to put it down, I think, like right here and then place... Do I have an X? I don't, but I have spaxel hose. Uh, I'm going to place down fence on top of it to uh, prevent them from escaping. And then we can put them back in like this. We only really need the one cow, of course. Like two cows is uh, is overkill. But uh, essentially at that point, if we have this right click with the bucket of milk, we do want to provide power to that. But uh, that shouldn't be too difficult. We can get a tunnel going into here. And uh, that should, at that point, milk the cow. And what we can do is we can have a server on an item duct that is whitelisted to pull out a, a full bucket of milk. And then we can just have that deposited, I think for now, into a tank. And if we stick our tank, uh, you know, uh, next to a, an external storage, we can then export that anywhere else in the base that we want. I'm wondering, though, if I should move... I don't think I can move the cows. I was going to say we should do this in another room because this room is kind of awkwardly placed and doesn't have any tunnels going to it just yet. But um, unfortunately, we, uh, we do not have, I don't think, a way to get these cows out. A mob? Holds a mob in stasis. Throw at a mob to capture it. How hard is a mob to make? It requires soul sand, slag, enderpearls, and slime. Uh, but that's eight mobs, and uh, we really only need the one cow. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm just going to nab one of these. That is <laughs> incredible. I'll leave the other guy in here for now. And I'm going to take this uh, clicker away. So I think we will do this, chat, in here. Because we're going to get, we're going to need the phytogenic insulator as well for the mushrooms and the nether wart, so we might as well do it in here, because that's where the... Uh, rich phytogrow is, or the flux phytogrow even. I think I'll just put him in the corner over here. Let's grab some fences. And, uh, of course, our clicker. We'll put this guy down like that, and then close this guy in. 
in uh, in a way that has been described by some as somewhat inhumane, but it works. And then I think all we will do, like I said, is we'll grab a tank. I do need to go and put this other tank back down. And you know what? I'll grab one of these uh, resonant tanks because for now we can just go and do something like this. Dump the lava out of this one into this one and then put this like right here. Stick one of our external storages right about there. And then, oh no, I guess we're going to need another clicker, right, actually? Because we need the uh, the other clicker to click the milk into the, the tank, if that makes sense. So I think what we'll do is we'll quickly grab a second clicker. And we'll put it down if we can, facing this way, but uh, preferably not there. Like that. Uh, so this one is going to right-click. And this one's going to right-click. And then we just need an item duct. And I think you can have an item duct with a servo on either end. Because essentially the plan here is to have one servo here, one servo here. This servo is going to be whitelisted to only pull out buckets of milk. Like that. And then this one up here is going to be whitelisted to pull out empty buckets. Like that. Does that work. I am going to speed this up eventually. Okay, so it has been recommended to me by a wise member of the Twitch chat that I should uh, not use an auto clicker here, which I, I, I wholly agree with, because we can instead use a fluid transposer, which is a little more expensive, but we already have one, of course. And with this, all we have to do is set the bottom to insert, so blue. We'll set the left side here to output we're going to put it this way by the way uh, yellow and auto output should be on and then we'll also have the right side be the output for the uh, for the final product so i think chat what we can do here is we can do something Ooh. no this should be fine i think i'm going to do it like this but then not have this connect and instead didn't want to do that chat And instead, just have it go down to here. Again, if this guy escapes, it's not a huge problem. I can move him back in a second. But if we just have our item duct there, I do that. I think that should be fine. He might be able to jump up there. Like onto this little li lip. But I think that should be okay. So yeah, there we go. And then that should uh, hopefully get pumped back around and move on to something. I'm going to put a servo there to make that bucket uh, a bit faster. And we can also, of course, if we want to um, add multiple buckets to the system. Yeah. Although maybe that didn't work. Did that pop out? It did. Okay, so maybe we can't have multiple buckets. We can just have the one. Either way, that's fine. We don't need milk coming in so fast. I think for now, this is uh, this is probably fast enough. Uh, we do want to speed up the clicker, I think, if uh, if nothing else. Okay, I'm going to move the, uh, the cache we put down here. This one. I'll come back to you in a second. That's going to allow me to move this over here. And I think I will use the uh, signal and plated item ducts. To get power up to the fluid transposer. And to get power here as well. At that point, we can just put down our hardened flux duct there and the uh, signal and plated item ducts will carry the rest. Um, I will also grab one of our conversion kits to uh, to upgrade the fluid transposer. Again, I'll just make it a little bit more efficient as well. There we go. So hopefully that's now nice and fast. Um, we do want to make sure that is... I'll put it on speed 8 because I don't think it's going to be uh, doing much without an item in there. And there we go. I believe that is now pretty much milk automated. We already have uh, 30 buckets worth here. Uh, we could, of course, if we uh, if we wanted to, add like another clicker with another cow to get even more milk coming in. Uh, but I'm not really too sure that's going to be something we need. Um, I think we could also maybe slow this down a little bit. Just in case that milk ends up uh, going out. Actually, I don't think we need to. Yeah, that should be fine. So let's replace down our external storage. Like so. And I think for now, I'll also put down 
this uh, hemp cache. Like just right here. Okay, it doesn't really matter where it goes, so long as it's somewhere. And uh, let's not forget as well to turn this into uh, fluid mode. There we go. Uh, so now our system does have access to uh, to milk. And so we should at that point, chat, be able to, uh, to teach our system, I think, how to make blocks of slime. Because the blocks of slime are just milk and mushrooms. So I do think, chat, that we have more phytogenic insulators here than we need. Now that we're only using one redstone furnace because we uh, got rid of the other one to make room for the pulverizer. We're currently overloading this, and uh, you'll notice that not all of our phytogenic insulators are working, especially this top one. So I think I might nab this top insulator and use it to make mushrooms. So I think, again, for now, we want this probably somewhere um, along the uh, the phytogrow line. So I'm going to put it like right here. And uh, trust me, I am aware of how janky this is getting. But if we set the left here to input, that's going to receive some of that phytogrow. And uh, we already have mushrooms in our system. So we'll just go ahead and, uh, and throw those in. We already also have the, uh, the augments we need. Uh, we don't need the sampling infuser. But uh, I will go ahead and throw in another reception coil here just to make it a tad faster. There we go. Uh, and that should hopefully begin making us mushrooms. So for the mushroom here, the only thing that we're currently missing is uh, the unlimited water source, which needs some uh, basic plating. I'm hoping we can use the tank there. We can indeed. Fantastic. Um, I would like, if possible, to get eight of these to upgrade to the next uh, tier of um, of water source, because I think the basic tier is not quite good enough. So let's see if we can't get one, two, three, four, five more of those, and then upgrade that to uh, the compact infinite water source, at which point uh, we can just throw this down, I think for now, right on top, like so. Um, I don't know if there's any byproducts here. There isn't, thank goodness. So we don't have to use a nullifier of any kind. We're just going to get mushrooms uh, that we can then use however we like. And again, I think for now, um, all we'll do is we'll output those to the right-hand side and uh, throw down a cache. Like that. Make sure it's locked uh, to mushrooms as soon as they get exported. There we go. Lock that and then put down uh, yet another external storage right about there. I did notice that that, that that was our last external storage, so I think I will go and uh, request like more of those because they are probably our most used item. But now that we have both mushrooms and milk available to our system, making the slimes should not be a huge deal. Someone in chat did point out that when we use the uh, the barrel to make slime, and we are going to need a... Oh, no, we've got a barrel on us. When we use the barrel to make slime, baby slimes are spawned, and so we do have to uh, factor those in when we're making these. And uh, I think... For now, a good way of getting rid of them might just be to build this setup above lava so they just die when they spawn in. So the chat has recommended that we use magma blocks instead of lava to kill them because the magma, dro uh, magma blocks will kill the slimes but leave the drops, at which point we could use, for example, a vacuumulator uh, to collect all of the, uh, the resultant products. Now, I don't know how far away the slimes will spawn, but I think if we designate like a 3x3 three three area and make sure that the... Uh, and maybe make the slime in like the back corner, I think we can probably safely capture all of the the slimes if we just fill the 3x3 area with the magma blocks. So the magma blocks are fairly easy to make using the uh, mechanical squeezer that we got uh, a few streams back now. Or the, uh, we didn't, ooh, did we make a mechanical drying basin? We didn't. So two energy batteries, one and two, and that chat gets us a mechanical squeezer, a uh, mechanical drying basin even. So once we have the mechanical drying basin, we can put lava into it, and that lava should slowly but surely get turned into a magma block. And like I said before, I think I'm going to go with uh, with nine of these, and uh, I would assume that we can indeed use the reservoir here to dump multiple buckets of lava at once. We can indeed. Can I use the reservoir for this? I can't, which is a little annoying, but not a problem. I do like that it can pull empty buckets from our system. I did not know that it could do that. So even if you don't have a bucket on you, the system can, if you just click in the fluid grid up here, it will pull a lava bucket anywhere, which is uh, very nice indeed. So that's going to get us a few more buckets. Let's keep going. Let's get uh, nine of these if we can. And there we go. Okie dokie. So now we have the magma blocks. If we head on back through into here, I think what I am going to do, chat, is I'm just thinking about where I want to do this. So I'm thinking I might just do it here near everything else instead of running cable all the way over to this back corner. I'm essentially thinking if we move this, uh, this tank here, if we have... Just like a three by three platform. And then I'm going to surround that with uh, with fence. 
just so the slimes can't escape, and also so that uh, I don't accidentally hurt myself like that. I do see that we are uh, full upon milk, which is very nice indeed. What happens when it gets full upon milk? We're not quite full upon milk, but it is going to fill upon milk, at which point I'm not quite sure what the... Uh, what happens there? I guess it just gets stuck in the fluid transposer, right? I assume that's the uh, the solution. So the barrel is going to go probably just like right here in the middle. And I think all we'll really do here is just have milk permanently exported to this. That feel Basically because we're not going to use milk for anything else. We might as well just export it at Holy to this area. Also, real quick, a slight detour here. Let me teach my system how to make exporters. One of those things that uh, we make so often, and it infuriates me every time that our system currently does not know how to make these. So let me do that, and let me request some uh, exporters. So once those exporters are done, uh, we should be able, at that point, to go ahead and uh, basically tell this to, uh, to permanently keep this full of, uh, of milk. I've also got to stop putting my flight ring away. I do it every time. So in here, fluids, milk, and that is now full, fantastic. And then at that point, chat, really all we have to do is uh, throw down an importer on the other side, which is also something I should teach my system how to make. And you know what? I say it every time and then I never follow through with it. So I'm going to go back right now and I'm going to teach my system how to make importers as well as exporters. Another item that we use very regularly. There we go. And then, uh, and then yeah, we're pretty much good to go. We can uh, put down a crafter. I think the crafter can just go directly on top of the uh, the stone barrel here. I think that will work just fine. Like that. And then don't forget the importer, which I'll put, I think, probably just right about there with another cable like that. So one mushroom equals one slime block in code. And then back over in here, if we throw that into said crafter, I believe, chat, that our system should now be able to make slime blocks. It totally can. Nice. And uh, if I were to request many slime blocks, how many mushrooms do we have? 700. Perfect. So if I were to request, let's say, 50 slime blocks, I just want to see if the uh, the slimes do die. Uh, the slimes do die. Yeah. They take a second to, and we will need a, uh, a vacuumulator if we're going to collect up all their, uh, their wares there. And I think with this one, chat, we'll probably just have a vacuumulator that goes directly into the system. So we can just put like a an output there and then put another importer on the top of that to pull anything that's collected there directly back into the uh, into the network. People are correct and I am making dirt here. I assume the solution to that problem is to make the milk much faster. Like if I put speed upgrades into the, the milk exporter, Presumably that will uh, alleviate this issue. Because the uh, the problem there was, is that the mushrooms were going in faster than the milk could. So we do have to wait for this. Uh, actually, I guess we don't have to wait. We could just break and replace this. That is going to go straight back into the system, thanks to our uh, guy here. And in fact, you know what? I will go and uh, just to stop the vacuumulator picking things up, if we uh, shift right click from a distance, we can enter the configuration mode and whitelist slime balls. So nothing else gets pulled in. Let me try that now. Let's see if that's fast enough. If I try again and get like 50 blocks of, of slime. That totally does work. It produces a lot of slimes. <laughs> More than I would like. And it produces them in a radius that is also much greater than I was initially anticipating. I should probably go and stop the, uh, the crafts. Please cancel. I don't think higher fences are going to work. Where the heck did they go? They just despawn when you leave? Wait. I guess maybe we don't have to worry too much about them. If they don't spawn in when we're not there. Let me see. If I go like slime. If I request slime while I'm out of that room. 
I assume that we get the slime, but don't have to worry about the uh, the actual slimes. Yeah, it would seem that they only spawn in if we're there, and uh, unlike other mobs like the cows, they're not permanent. So I think that's fine. There's no point in making the, the fences bigger chat because they were spawning outside the fences. Like some of them were obviously jumping out, but like for the most part, they were just also spawning outside of that. But yeah, it seems like this is not an issue. It does mean that if we're in here and slime is requested, we are going to see slimes, but they do despawn pretty much instantaneously. I assume as a, a method of not causing massive amounts of lag. So that's pretty neat. Now that we have the ability to make slime, what we can do is we can come back here. We can teach our system how to turn slime balls into slime. So slime. Of course, all we have to teach it here is to, uh, to craft the blocks uh, into balls. Like so. And then at that point, chat, we're very close to being able to teach our system how to make the chow. This stuff here. So the chow is bread, sawdust, and slime balls. Now, bread, I'm a, we're getting very close on the poop. We're 15,000 away from, uh, from having enough poop here. So I don't know if I necessarily want to interrupt my, uh, my wheat farm down here just yet. The wheat is coming in very slowly. Uh, once we have the 100,000 poop, what I'll probably do is like get rid of these back two. The sequential fabricator and the uh, pulp bio blend, and we'll just have the uh, the cache collecting the wheat directly out of the uh, the insulator, and then we can use that wheat to make bread and use that bread to make chow. Let's go check up on our water. So yeah, you'll see this has already managed to uh, to acquire certain certain fish, and I think really all we want to do here is probably throw down some caches and the nullifier. Um, I don't know what kind of fish we can get. I assume we can get just these three plus salmon. So raw fish, clownfish, puffer fish, and salmon. I don't think that the aquatic entangler is going to pull like boots or leather or bones or rotten flesh or anything like that. So I believe, chat, that all we really have to do is uh, is make ourselves maybe four caches and an nullifier. We could, of course, export directly into our system, but I think that would back it up faster than I'd like. So we'll do one, two, one, two, one, two. Something like that. Make sure the top of this is set to uh, output. Auto output is on. And then we'll, uh, we'll have you, you, you. And then, uh, like I said, I assume that, that we can get the uh, the clownfish, which is what we'll put in here when we get some. For now, though, we can lock those. Uh, of course, we do want external storages on all of these for later on down the line. Uh, and, of course, we do need to get some outside cabling coming in. Um, I do think I'm going to move this, by the way. And uh, once again, I think I will hide it inside of our new kind of general purpose room here. All we need for this is uh, is refined storage cabling. So um, I think I'm just going to put it like right here. You know, this way we can, if we wanted to add power in later on down the line, even though I don't think the power is uh, strictly necessary. Uh, do we have a tunnel? We do indeed. Uh, tunnels are coming in from the top. Let me change my input slot to like here. So we'll have something like that. Make sure that's set to cable and then run that cable down to them. And then at that point, chat, all of those fish should be available in the system. Nice. Now, is that uh, working is a good question. The answer would appear to be no. Like, it's not uh, auto-ejecting. Which is interesting, but I assume we can fix that with a server. Yeah, I don't know why that didn't auto-eject. Um, you know what, sure, let's... I I'm going to split this then. I'm going to move this, like, up by one and have half of our wheat go through to be uh, to be mulch and we'll have half the wheat just go directly over um, into a cache. That way we can uh, we can send some of that wheat through and, uh, and turn it into... I need to pick that up. Uh, and turn it into bread. So right here, if we get rid of this and then have just a, uh, a cable, an item duct that is, that goes like here and here, disconnect all of these, and then I'll put down a cache. 
And we'll just make sure this is set to, uh, to round robin. I don't think that nullifier is going to be an issue. Uh, let me make sure we put a servo down there. For now, I think a signal alarm server is fine. It's coming out fairly slowly. And make sure that I set to round robin, like so. At which point, it should send some wheat here and down there. And of course, at that point, chat, we can put an external storage on that thing, like so. The, the reason this room has become so janky is because I've tried to fit all of the machines that need Phytogrow onto this line of, of cabling and also onto the line that currently contains uh, power. And I'm going to do it again. I'm going to put a, a Phytogenic insulator down, like right here, and make sure that it points that way so that it can accept Phytogrow on the left, like that. Uh, we should already have Netherwalk. Oh, we don't. That's fine. Uh, I believe we can sift Soul Sand to get some Netherwalk. And we should already have. We don't have any sieves. Oh, all of our sieves are, uh, are outside, aren't they? Yes, here they are. But we should be able to fairly easily get some uh, some nether wart. We only need the one. There we go. Perfect. Right, so back in here. Back down here. Back in here. We can throw in our nether wart. We do want to upgrade this first, I think. And, uh, and as always, we do want to put in the augment that stops the uh, the nether wart from cycling through, that being the uh, mono cultural cycle, for which we have zero of the items required, but uh, of which we can make all of the items required. I'm hoping we already have nickel over here. We do indeed. Fantastic. So that should be this guy taken care of. And uh, as per usual, we should probably also make a few of these just to reduce the amount of uh, phytogrow used. Thankfully, it would seem that we do have more than enough fighter grow to run basically all of our machines at this point in time. But uh, to play on the safe side, I will make two more of these nutrient recovery augments. Just as soon as we get a little bit more hardened glass. There we go. And in true uh, fighter grow fashion, we'll also get a, uh, a reception coil as well. So let's go ahead and throw all of these in here. There we go. Uh, is there a byproduct to the nether wart? There is not. Fantastic. So much like the mushroom, we can just put that in, uh, and that should slowly but surely, uh, as soon as we provide it with water, which this time, I guess I'm going to do on the top. Like that. And finally, of course, chat, we can get a cache. Throw that down here, stick down, you guessed it, an external storage. And we should be good to go. External storage, let's make sure this is set to output on the back, like that. Let's make sure that we lock this as soon as that uh, nether wall gets in there. And so now, if we uh, head on back through to here, we can teach our system how to make rich aqua chow, like so. We do still need to teach our system how to make bread, which is actually fine. I think all we have to do is uh, teach it, first of all, how to make flour using the, uh, the manufacturing, so processing and encode, and then how to turn the flour into bread which can be done in any furnace in code. And at that point, we can put these in over here. So our manufacturer is right there. That's for the flour. And then our furnace is just the strong box. So that one is right there. At which point now, if I was to go and request, uh, how much wheat do we have? We've got 400. If I was to request some bread, does it work? It does. Nice. Okay. So the final piece of the puzzle chat is to uh, to charge it. And I think for that, I'm going to nab this guy. I'm going to head on into the uh, the aqua room. I feel like because there's no other like time in which this is necessary, I think for this, we can do a tunnel in the roof, like so. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to have the energetic infuser right about there. We're going to put an exporter 
on the back of this guy. That exporter is going to have a crafting card. And you know what? Once again, much like the importer and the exporter, the crafting card is one of those items that I uh, constantly make and that I really should have at this point in time automated. So let's teach it how to make a crafting card. I don't know if it knows how to make upgrades right now, so I will also teach it how to make one of those as well in code. And then we'll throw both of those in there. At that point, I should be able to just request a crafting card as soon as the system updates here. And if I can type correctly. There it is. Request. And essentially, all we're going to do is we're going to have the, uh, the exporter fill up the energetic infuser. So exporter, crafting card. I want you to export the chow. So let's request our first bits of chow. Fantastic. We're going to have that in like so. That should fill that up. We'll make sure the back there is set to input. We're going to have the bottom set to output. I will speed this up, of course. We'll grab a uh, conversion kit. I don't think we need the upgrade that is currently in there. That being uh, this one. So we'll do that and we'll just get some speed augments. Like that. And then basically we're just going to pump those down into our entangler. I'll rotate it to there. And I think this is fine. Obviously we want to uh, disconnect that. But I think so long as that is set to input there, that should be A-OK. -okay. And that should hopefully increase the amount of fish we get. I think we get a 4x multiplier for this. Um, it'll appear after the next like cycle is finished. So once we get more fish, uh, we should see like a little X4 here and we should start getting uh, getting even more fish going forward. Which will be uh, very nice indeed. I, I, I think this is fine. I don't know if we need water on this side here. Um, if we do, what we could do is we could put retrievers on all of these and then a retriever on this as well. But I don't think that's going to be necessary. I also don't really think we needed to upgrade this quite so much, but that's okay. And um, it does, however, remind me, chat, that somebody in the Twitch chat last stream did point out that if we get an energetic infuser, which we apparently have none of the items to make, but that's fine. We can make it fairly easily. We can upgrade it with one of these augments on the right here. Specifically, we're after this one, the... Uh, Parabolic flux coupling, which allows for rapid wireless charging of flux capacitors. I believe if we have that, it will also wirelessly charge. It might wirelessly charge our wireless crafter. If it doesn't, we can carry around a flux capacitor, which will also charge our wireless uh, our wireless uh, crafter, the wireless access terminal, that is. So can I make one of these? It requires some electrum and some silver plates. Let me uh, test this real quick. If I do you and, of course, real quick, grab a conversion kit. We don't need the highest tier, actually. We probably don't even need the second highest tier. I think this one will do just fine. So does that wirelessly fill up this? It doesn't. However, if we get a flux capacitor, really of any tier for now, um, that should be wirelessly charged. It is. It's being charged by this guy. And if we shift right-click this, uh, that should then begin charging other items on us. I think. Use while sneaking to deactivate. Press V to change charging mode. Okay, V. There we go. Charging inventory. Shift right click to turn it on. And there we go. It's charging up our wireless crafting terminal. So I think as long as we keep both of these guys in our inventory, our wireless crafting grid should, I think, always have charge. Meaning that we don't have to keep manually uh, charging it up over and over and over again, which will be a very nice. There's just one less thing uh, that we have to do going forward. And then, now chat, the uh, the next thing that I want to do cycles back around to our diamond hunt, right? To our hop graphite ingots. Uh, are we really out of hops to two carbon fiber? We are. That's because I did turn off this a little while back to uh, so we're not getting more dash which is uh, definitely the issue. I need to change this to be more like this. Um, but my point, chat, is that uh, we currently have 80,000 hot graphite ingots, which is uh, less than a third of the way to what we actually need, being the 270,000. And so 
Um, Chet did recommend potentially uh, enchanting diamond pickaxes and using those. The trouble with that, of course, is that we don't have experience. However, it turns out that you can make bottles of enchanting and that you can essentially duplicate essence of knowledge, which is uh, experience, with the bottle of enchanting method. So do we have our Tome of Knowledge? We do indeed. We can use that to get a little bit of, uh, of initial experience here. I'm hoping we have enough to make one bottle of enchanting. If we do, we can get the system on the, on the road. Uh, for it to work, all we need is a clicker. We need the insightful condenser, which allows us to collect experience in a given area. Uh, this is made with the Tome of Knowledge. We might have to make a fresh one, although I don't know if it's actually used in the craft or if it's uh, given back to us. Let me just take all my XP out just in case. It is used. Okay, that's fine. We can probably make another Tome of Knowledge fairly easily, I would imagine. Yeah, that doesn't seem too bad whatsoever. There we go. So, and then the, the, the final piece of uh, of the puzzle is a, another fluid transposer. Essentially, all we need to do is we need to have the auto clicker right up against the wall. We're gonna have the collector, let's say right about there. And then we'll have the fluid transposer, I think like right here. And the plan is that we use a fluid transposer to fill up a bottle of uh, glass. Like we fill a glass bottle with uh, essence of knowledge that becomes a bottle of enchanting. That bottle of enchanting then goes over to the right. So we have output on the right there and uh, input on the back. That bottle of enchanting is then used by the clicker, smashed against the wall. The insightful collector collects all the experience. And then if we make sure that this is set to output on the left, like so, that's going to pump that experience back into the fluid transposer. We're going to teach our system how to make glass bottles and use an exporter to keep this full of glass bottles. And we are going to use a lot of glass here to the point where we might have to upgrade uh, the speed at which we make uh, sand and glass, but we'll look at that when the time comes. So that's going to keep this full up with glass bottles. We're going to keep making bottles of enchanting. That's going to go in here. Uh, by default, you don't get more experience back or more essence of knowledge back than it takes to make it. So by default, if you put a bottle of enchanting in here, smash it and collect it, you will actually get less than the 200 millibuckets required to make another bottle of enchanting. You see it requires 200, oh sorry, the 250. You get less than that. However, if you put lapis into the insightful condenser, much like the, uh, the chow with the aquatic entangler, if you put uh, lapis in here, you actually multiply the amount of experience you get from each bottle to the point where you get more than it's required, more than is required to make it. You see that now we're getting plus 100%. So, if we use our Tome of Knowledge here to extract our current experience, and uh, if we hope that we have enough in here, let me of course run uh, both some power and some cabling over to this machine. Please forgive the cabling. I'm hoping we have a decent amount in there. Let's get a conversion kit. We don't have enough. So we are going to have to do a little bit of, uh, of experience gathering. Thankfully, we can get that fairly easily by just heading out and, uh, and killing a few mobs in the overworld, uh, whether they be uh, passive or hostile. It shouldn't take us too long to get up to 250 millibuckets to start the system. And once we got the system started, we should be able to uh, fairly easily like increase the amount of knowledge that we have exponentially um, at which point we'll store the excess knowledge in a tank make that tank accessible to our system if we want uh, but essentially the point is that we can use that knowledge to give ourselves more levels and thus use that knowledge to enchant going forward which will allow us to enchant our pickaxes with unbreaking and use those to hopefully increase our diamond production that is the idea at least i think two levels is actually going to be more than enough Let's drop all that into the Tome of Knowledge, throw the Tome of Knowledge back into uh, there. And there we go, 540. Nice, nice, nice. Okay, so let's put down that exporter. Uh, we've already done it. Let's connect up that exporter with some cabling. Let's quickly head back and teach our system how to make glass bottles. Thankfully, it does already know how to make glass. Again, I'm not quite sure if it knows how to make glass fast enough. Um, I think it does. We have multiple furnaces in uh, in here. We could upgrade these. Right now, they're only signal, and we could upgrade them to the uh, the highest tier, the Enderium uh, upgrade kit. But uh, we might have to upgrade the speed at which we make sand. I think right now we're using the manufacturer to turn cobblestone into sand, which might not be fast enough. 
uh, because we do need quite a lot of glass bottles, but we'll, fi we'll find out um, in, uh, in just a second here. So let's throw you in up there. And then now over in here, if we request a glass bottle, or three, and then put that in like so, that should begin throwing those in there. Hopefully. I guess we want the back to be yellow, not uh, not red. Uh, it does require a crafting card, of course. There we go. Uh, and on top of that, we do have to make sure that this is changed to the mode that puts the um, the essence into the item. So like this. Uh, let's put the crafting card in, like so. Uh, we are also going to run some power over. I'm stepping back because I don't want to collect this experience. Uh, I will bump that up to like speed 8. And so we should see this slowly get faster and faster. Let's grab that conversion kit and drop this in here. It's going to get pretty loud, I think, chat, when, uh, when this starts to speed up. But hopefully we won't be spending too much more time in this room. There we go. Um, I think we'll also need some speed. And maybe even like a stack upgrade, actually. Because I think we might not be getting the glass fast enough. We're missing sugar cane. Oh yeah, the sugar cane, of course, is in the... Uh, it's in its own It's in its own cache. I don't want to be collecting that sugar cane, uh, that uh, experience. I think one stack and one speed upgrade should be fine with this. Like that. That should hopefully keep this guy full. Potentially. So two speed and one stack upgrade. Yeah, it would appear that our system is not able uh, to keep up with this. Uh, we do, of course, actually, yeah, someone makes a good point. Let me slow this right down for a second. Uh, we do, of course, want to make sure that we also have an exporter for Lapis. And I am also hoping that our Lapis is coming in fast enough to keep up with this. Uh, we actually already have, like, the Lapis isn't used that, uh, that quick. But I will put Lapis in there. And that should be fine. Then, of course, we'll speed this guy back up to, uh, to speed 8. There we go. The only trouble now, chat, is collecting the excess essence of knowledge. Because right now, this is filling up. I'll slow it down ever so slightly. Um, this is full. I don't know how we're going to go about connecting that, uh, like how, how we're going to go about collecting the excess essence. So I think the only way we can really do this is using the uh, the fluid conduits from NYO. Because the fluid conduits from NYO, unlike the uh, fluid duct from Thermal Dynamics, which we've been using up until now for almost everything, uh, allow for a, a nearest first option, which would allow us to fill up the fluid transposer before we start filling up a tank for, uh, for you know, general use. So let's get some clay going. And uh, let's get a good bit of this uh, conduit binder here. Let's use our trusty nuclear furnace that we've not used in quite some time here. Uh, that should allow us. We only need the one cable, I think, here. So really, it's not going to take us too long whatsoever. Um, it is going to be quite hard, chat, I will uh, admit, for us to ever have glass available ever again. Because our glass is always going to get used, but uh, that's fine. So that gets us eight fluid conduits. We're going to upgrade those to eight pressurized fluid conduits using uh, some hardened glass, I assume. Yes, we can indeed use hardened glass for that. Let's uh, request some more of that as well. I'll request like a stack of hardened glass. I feel like we do need quite a bit of it. We are going to need some uh, vibrant alloy for this. So for the vibrant alloy, we need energetic alloy and ender pearls. The energetic alloy is made with gold and energetic blend, which is a redstone and a glowstone. So uh, let's grab some gold and some of that, throw it into our alloy furnace. There we go. And then we'll grab some ender pearls, throw those in as well. Again, we only need one of these, I think. Oh, no, we actually need two, which is uh, perfect because that's what we have. And so at that point, we can uh, go ahead and grab the remainder of our conduit binder, do something like this, and compare. We have the the, uh, the ender fluid conduits, which are the highest tier. We might not have needed the actual highest tier chat, but uh, having it is, uh, is not going to be an issue whatsoever. 
So I think with this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the condenser back by one. That does, of course, mean that I have to move this guy. We might accidentally collect way too much experience here, but that's also another problem. We can always put it back in via our Tome of Knowledge if we, uh, if we want. So we'll do that. That's going to export the lapis there. Fantastic. And then what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of you. And we're going to also, I think, for now, move this cable. Because essentially all we're going to do is we're going to have a fluid duct, or fluid conduit even, right about here. And with this, what you can do is we can set this one to extract. Um, and we could set it to like round robin. Right now we want round robin disabled. And we want to make sure that we have this set with the priority system. So uh, right now, set uh, redstone, always active. Uh, this one is going to be set to insert. And we're going to give this like a priority of 10. I think anything above zero would be fine. And then we're going to have a tank. This one, I believe, is empty. It's not, but we can empty it with our nullifier. There we go. And if we drop that down like so, uh, that is going to fill up with essence. That's fine. Uh, we want to make sure that this is set to insert as well. Is, uh, is that all set up correctly? Oh, yeah, no, it's not. This needs to be set up to uh, insert on the left like that. So I think, chat, that should work. Let me quickly set it to extract. And I'll turn extract off. So what should happen is, so long as the left side there is set to output, which it is, I'm hopeful that this should extract this one here at the top, which I can hopefully get to. Is this the right one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I think we're, I think we're good. Chat, I think we're good. This one at the top here is set to insert and priority zero. Uh, this one is set to insert priority 10, and this one is set to extract. So I, I think we're good to go. I think right now I have just too many levels. I think I've extracted uh, too many levels from the system. So all I'm going to do real quick is just try and throw those uh, back into here. And we also actually know the reason we've broken it, chat, is because we also need to uh, reconnect to bar refined storage. So there we go. There we go. And now the experience should always go to the fluid transposer. And then when the fluid transposer is full, it should then make its way to the portable tank. Of course, if we want to be able to access that, we get an external storage and we uh, we put that down right about there, like that. At which point, chat, I think we're good to go. I think that should basically create experience. And any excess experience that we have should end up in that tank for us to use. But yeah. I think, Jen, with that, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up today's stream there. We now have an automatic way of making slime, uh, which is automatically working on our fish. Let me go check that real quick. How is our... Uh, I forget that it's not... Uh, it's in here, isn't it? It's kind of back over over here. How is that doing? Did we get any of the uh, the third fish? We did. So let me go and lock that as well. There we go. Uh, so we are getting fish. 21 salmon, clownfish, pufferfish, and raw fish. It is coming in. You'll see we've got the 4x multiplier there now. Uh, and we have, you know, enough uh, aqua chow there to keep this going for quite some time. So well, hopefully when we come back, we'll have even more fish. We don't need a ton, actually. I think, you know, maybe a hundred, maybe a few hundred should get us all the gelatin that we need. We might even already have enough. Uh, actually, I'm not quite sure what the uh, the precise conversion is and how much gelatin uh, we actually need. But by the time we come back to the next stream, uh, we should have enough and we should be able to look at making those uh, more small quad smingots, which is fantastic. We have experience coming in nice and fast. So uh, next time we can uh, come back and uh, start using some of the 84 buckets of essence of knowledge that we have. I wouldn't be surprised if we come back to... Um, a full 500,000 millibuckets of um, of essence. That would be uh, that would be grand, and uh, I think it's very doable, at which point we can then start using the arcane and salsa later to make a lot of these unbreaking books, which we could then use an anvil to craft up to unbreaking three, uh, put those on diamond pickaxes, and start using those rapidly uh, over in here to hopefully get enough diamond nuggets uh, to get us over the edge, because I think when we come back to the next stream, we'll be a little closer on the hot graphite ingots, but we might not be quite there, and so we can use the enchanting setup to kind of just push us over the edge and get us those final uh, diamond nuggets required to make the final uh, diamonds themselves. Um, but, but for now, guys, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up today's stream there.